This time, to liven up my tale, I brought along some visual aids. Just call me Slideshow Bob. Nobody do it. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 tech that doesn't exist anymore. This one looks pretty good. Oh, you don't want to buy that VCR. I don't? No, actually, to be totally honest with you, you don't want to buy any VCR. It's a <sighs> dead technology. For this list, we'll be looking at forms of technology and inventions that have essentially vanished from modern day use, likely having been replaced by something better. Despite the electronic connotation, that won't be a prerequisite for inclusion. Do you have any of these lying around? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, HD DVD Betamax LaserDisc. What's Betamax? Exactly. Long before the days of Spotify, Netflix, and countless other digital platforms, physical media were all the rage. And for each format that the masses chose to buy, others fell to the wayside. One of the more recent battles in the format war was HD DVD versus Blu-ray. Both were set to be high-definition versions of DVD, but only one of them came out on top. Now, I also was certain that HD DVD would win out over Blu-ray. How old were you then? Old enough to know better. <laughs> it's a familiar story that also played out in the 1980s when VHS beat out Betamax as the choice for home video. Even Laserdisc was supposed to be the next big thing and fizzled quickly. Hey, so just to warn you, uh, my dad only has a Laserdisc player and a movie called Fletch Lives. Oh, I've seen it like so many times. Are you serious? No, I don't know what that is. <laughs> With digital downloads having replaced physical media, these old relics are now nothing more than a part of history. Number nine, tabulating machine. Uh, now let's tabulate the results of the experiment. If we didn't have computers, how would we tally up large sums of data? You'd probably have to do it by hand. Ah, that's one. One bat. Two. Two bats. Three. Three fabulous flyers! Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Yet in the 1880s, Herman Hollerith found a way to use punch cards and a machine to tabulate large amounts of information. Much the same way a train conductor would punch a ticket, his machine would read the punched holes in cardstock and use it to keep tallies on various pieces of information. Originally used in the U.S. Census, Hollerith's invention quickly became popular with those in the accounting field. The tabulating machine eventually fell out of favor with the invention of calculators and personal computers. Okay, the computer is tabulating. Oh. Number eight, telegraph machine. Ah, the telegraph. S O S. Morse code is a means by which two parties can communicate using different signal lengths and no audible voice. The dots and dashes are typically heard as sound or seen as flashes of light. This system was thus instrumental in the operation of the telegraph machine. Anchorage, stop, repeat, urgent request, more diphtheria antitoxin, stop. These devices were quite popular during armed conflicts as they required both the sender and the receiver to be versed in Morse code or any other encrypted signaling being used at the time. As technology evolved, the advent of telephones and eventually the internet replaced the need for telegraphy and telegram machines. Oh, he killed her. Just like the telephone killed the telegraph sex business. Hey, baby, I bet you're hot. Stop. Number seven, Google Glass. Why does everything have to be smart? This is your touchpad. It runs from your temple to your ear. Tap the touchpad to wake up glass. In 2013, Google began offering a prototype known as Google Glass. It was wearable tech that fit much like a pair of glasses, but allowed you to see many of the Google apps through a little glass window. With a built-in camera, the device suffered controversy over privacy concerns around the lack of consent when being recorded. The device did eventually allow other app developers to create programs to run on the platform, but Google killed the public version in 2015. It's since released enterprise versions of the technology, but it seems the world still isn't ready for smart glasses. Google Glass? We're like Google ass. Number six, VHS Rewinders. What's VHS? Now here's a piece of technology that died as a result of collateral damage. When DVD and subsequently Blu-ray replaced the VHS cassette, it also took out the rewinder. Many folks from the videotape era will remember rental stores reminding them to be kind, rewind. Okay. <laughs> you see, VHS tapes had to be rewound to the beginning to rewatch whatever was on it. So lo and behold, someone invented a machine that literally did nothing more than rewind these tapes. 
Places like Blockbuster Video commonly had several of these machines on hand, since renters would frequently forget to wind their rentals back, often resulting in a fee. I'm just gonna take my VCR, my VCR head cleaning tape, my VCR head cleaning spray, my head cleaning rag, and my rewinder, and just get the hell out of here. Number five, RF game adapters. We need to order an adapter. No, go buy an adapter. There's like 50 Russian electronic stores in Glendale. Do you remember having to put your TV on channel three or four for your video game machine to work? No, seriously, that really was a thing at one time. It has to be on channel three. <laughs> Early home video game machines used a special switch that attached to the back of the TV that allowed game systems like Atari to play on your television. Even early home computers like the Commodore and the Amiga used these boxes. It wasn't until years later that televisions started to have extra audio and video inputs. Once the video game manufacturers caught up, the game adapter became obsolete. You gotta find the RFP1U with coaxial cable so you can connect the video ins and outs. Bob, English. Right. Sorry. Number four, slide projectors. Slides are almost ready. <laughs> yeah. Ever wonder where the term slideshow came from? At one time, people would paint images onto glass and project light through them to show an image on a wall. Let's go on slide. Seated scribe, Egypt, 2400 BC. In 1936, Kodak came out with film slides that you could develop your photos onto. These small 2x2 two two inch slides later fit into a circular machine that would turn on demand, switching slides in the process. The use of photographic slides and even transparencies on overhead projectors was quite popular until digital photos and the likes of PowerPoint came along. PowerPoint, PowerPoint, PowerPoint. Though perhaps retro, the projectors themselves are otherwise relegated to the dustbin of history. Number three, carbon paper. They're messing things up with that carbon paper. Yeah, what do you know about it? Yeah, out of the way. I was forging documents before your parents were born. This entry is unique in that it's the only one on this list that isn't electric whatsoever. Carbon paper was a type of paper that had a layer of ink on one side and was often used to create multiple copies of other paperwork. The ink on the other side of the carbon would transfer to anything underneath it when pressure was applied from the other side. So if you wrote on the top of the paper, the carbon printed a copy underneath. It was often employed with early credit card machines, checks, and receipts. A savings bond printed on carbon-based paper paid to a carbon-based man for something he made out of carbon. Carbonless copy paper and the use of word processing applications and real printers eventually made this black, messy invention obsolete. You put a piece of carbon paper under your heart and gave me just a copy of your love. Number two, daisy wheel printers. Shaped like a flower, daisy wheel printers used a combination of new and old technology. The wheel contained tiny slivers, each of which had a single character formed at the end, similar to the metal arms used on a typewriter. When something was printed from a computer, the device would spin the wheel to the proper character, and a single hammer would push it against an ink ribbon, causing the impression on the paper. It would switch from character to character very fast as it typed out whatever had been printed. They were far superior in quality to dot matrix printers, but eventually faded away into oblivion with the introduction of inkjet and laser technology. Psst, that's not scary. It is if you're a laser printer. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a couple of honorable mentions. Telex machines, text messaging prior to the digital era. Fine, then go check your telex. Oh my god! Look at that! A burn notice? Cinerama. An early attempt at IMAX-like quality in movies. It was eventually abandoned because they went to Hollywood with it. Traditional Hollywood crews had a lot of problems in working in Cinerama. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one. Acoustic coupler modems. What are you doing? Dialing into the school's computer. The mere mention of dial-up internet in today's world triggers memories of terrible connection speeds and awful noises emitted by your computer. <laughs> But 
but even before the internet was a thing, early computers could use modems to connect to each other. The earliest versions of this technology involved putting the actual phone receiver into a machine that would convert sound into digital pulses. It was kind of like giving a computer a set of ears to use the phone. As technology grew, the need to plug the handset in faded, and now the acoustic coupler is merely a reminder of how far technology has come. I guess I better get going. Thanks for the ride. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.